Welcome, everybody. Welcome online to Miracle City. My name is Marcus England. I am the lead pastor at a church called The Mix in Baltimore City. And I am excited to be with you on today. I give honor uh, to Pastor Franklin uh, in his absence. I am very gracious to be in his stead, but it is good to see his wonderful wife, Cynthia, here, and the boys, who I love so dearly. And I give honor to my wife, who is here, to Mishia, who traveled with me, and even the mixed family, Sequoia and Jocelyn. Thanks for hanging with me today. And I just want to tell you that God has a word, and I believe it's a word because uh, you all are in a series called I Will See It. It is a declarative statement that what God has planned for you, it will take place. It will happen. It will come into fruition. And I believe today that there are some things we've got to call that the enemy has tried to discourage you about. It's the top of the week year, you're two weeks in, and, and your Planet Fitness membership has already failed you. You signed up for the 1999 plan that gives you the black card that you can go to any institution that you want to, yet you have not seen the inside of it since the 2nd of January. But tell somebody, I am still more than a conqueror. I'm going to get back on top next week. Amen. Amen. But I am grateful to be here and excited for what God is going to do. And I believe this is a year that you can see what God wants to do in your life to its fullest. But it's going to require something on your end. Can I tell you that prayer along without the faith and action of it moving is not going to produce the results that you are looking for. An ideal or a thought in your head is not enough. You are going to have to act on the faith of what God has already said is going to happen in your life. It's not about can it happen, it's about will it happen. And the will it happen is on, somebody say, me. The will it happen is on me today. And so I thought about this as I was just asking God, we are in this season of declaring that we shall see the very things that God has spoken and said to us. And we are believing that God is a God who cannot go back on his word. He cannot lie. He cannot make up anything. He cannot come to the place where he speaks it and it does not come into fruition. Everything that God speaks must come to pass. And so we are declaring it over our life. What God has spoken over your life, it must come to pass. But I've got some work to do in seeing what he is to reveal. And so I want to talk about that in this series. I will see it. Can you open your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 5? We're going to start at verse 8. And the scripture says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and someone say truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. That's something to underline in your Bible. This year, I will not be fruitless. This year, I will produce. But the Bible says in Genesis that he said, be fruitful and multiply. What he is speaking of is not just about what you are doing between a man and a woman. God has called for you to produce fruit because fruit tells that you are actually doing something in your life. So this year is a year of producing fruit and making sure that fruit multiplies. Can you just tell your neighbor, I won't be fruitless this year? 
have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. Now, this is a verse to look at. This is why it is said, wake up. Tell somebody, wake up. Sleep or rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And this last two verses is something to highlight. Be very careful. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. My topic for today is wake up, it's time. Wake up, it's time. If I could just connect with you in this moment to allow you to understand that even though the year has already moved into 18 days, there is still so much more to do. The top of the year allows us to have new beginnings, fresh starts. It allows us to have the opportunity to uh, revamp our purpose and revamp our understanding of defining the goals that we have set for the upcoming year. It gives us an opportunity to look at our past goals and to look at our present goals to see and make sure that they clarify the future that God has already set for us to have. As we define what is to take place in this year, we must understand that in order for me to be effective and fruitful, I've got to have vision to look forward to. For the Bible says without there being a vision, the people do what? They perish. If there is no insight to where you are going, you will have nothing to work and plan towards. Your days will be empty. You will look for things to be able to identify your moments, and you will find that you will have free time to do things that were never declared for you to do. There will be a loss of time, a loss of moments. There will be a loss of opportunities that were supposed to hit your life, but they didn't hit them effectively because you weren't focused into your purpose. And so there are missed opportunities that happen because we aren't aligned with what God has already spoken for us to do. It's not just enough if I can tell you today to know what career you're going to be about. There must be a purpose that God has called for you to fulfill. There must be something that I'm connected with, something that inspires me, something that directs me further than where I am. I have to be purpose-filled. Without purpose, I have nothing to do. My time becomes wasted. My moments become abstract. My days I wish would disappear just with the fleet of a moment only because I'm not anticipating anything great to happen in my day. If I anticipated greatness to happen, I would plan for greatness to take place. I'm thinking there's a possibility that you're living is equal to your belief of what you are in expectation of. If I'm in expectation of great things, I'm living my life and setting it out as if something great will take place. This makes me think that there's something to the object and the purpose of the time that we use. Somebody say time. Time is important to you. Time is considered a commodity. The understanding in the business world is time is money. It is the one thing you cannot get back. Let me give you some understanding of time. There is something about time that puts all of us on the same level playing. Whether I don't have or I do have, I've still got 24 hours in a day. Whether I am sitting in a mansion or I am sitting somewhere where I don't want to be, I still have 24 hours. Somebody say 24. 24. 
There's something that you have that no one can take away from you, and that is the time that God has given you. If you use that time, that time will produce the person you are to become and who you are to be. I tend to believe that the object of who you are in this moment has much to do with the time that you've used. The product of who you are is a product of how you use your time. Where you place your time has a value system, and the value system that you looked at puts you where you are today. If you thought more about your education than you put the time into your education to get the degree that you wanted. If you put the time into how you look, it takes time for you to get ready in the morning. Ladies, say amen. amen. Time. There's something about the power of time to understand that in this moment, if I use my time wisely, there is a product that can come out that can be life-changing to me and life-changing to the world if I understood the power of every moment that I have. If I thought about every moment that I used, if I thought about everything that was coming my way, I would see time so much more effectively. If I looked at Jesus' life and see that when he started, he had three years of ministry, I would understand that God could do more than I could imagine or think in a small amount of time. Here's the thing I want to let you know. It does not take God long to get to where he needs to go. There's a possibility that what you believe should take two years can take God two months. There's a possibility that what you are creating a five-year plan for, God can do it in five days. We talked about singing this. We were more than conquerors. We are victorious. But is our thinking victorious enough to put us in position to receive what God has called for us to receive? Am I waiting in expectation? Is my 2020 set up to receive everything that God has for me? I'm interested in how you're planning your time. I'm interested in the use of this commodity that could produce the things that you have been desiring for so long and waiting on the Lord. The Bible says to wait on the Lord and to be of good carriage and he'll strengthen your heart. Problem is, is that you're supposed to be doing something while you're waiting. Occupied time waiting on God to bring miracles that you can do of yourself is not God's responsibility because he's already put everything inside of you that you need to do and get to where you're going. You don't have to pray and wait. You need to pray and move. There's a possibility that your waiting has delayed your blessing. Because the understanding is, is what I'm asking God to do to be the things I can't do of myself. Taking the scripture the wrong way to say, wait on the Lord. It's wait on the Lord when I've done everything I can. I don't wait on God to do what I have the ability to do of myself. I don't wait on the Lord when I have the ability to change it right where I am. I pray and I act in faith and God sees that. And when God sees it, he understands. Now it's time for me to move. The Bible lets us know that God will act once you move into your desire and you make a decision. There's a possibility that I want to say this morning that the lack of God's movement is a lack of your desire. Hmm. See, the understanding that your desire is more than just a notion or a good feeling that you have in your heart. 
Desire. Desire is something that you are, you are, I mean, just passionate about. Something that you aren't willing to settle a rest on. It is something that you can't stop talking about. It is the thing that people wish you would just be quiet about. It. You keep talking about it. You keep thinking about it. You keep looking it up. It's your Instagram quote. It's everything that you've been staring and waiting on. You have a desire. A desire is not something you see and you want, but you don't do anything about it. Desires cost you. The Bible will let us know that if we make a decision to move on a desire, God can now begin to activate his plan. Here's the question. Are you waiting for God to activate something that you're not even willing to move on? Is it a possibility that your prayer is at a stagnant place because God understands while your mouth is moving, there's nothing on the inside that's moving? And the reflection of where you are is the reflection of what God is saying. I'll wait on you. Scripture says wait on the Lord, but oftentimes the Lord is waiting on us to move effectively in what we need to do so that we can operate in the space that we need to operate. How my time is being planned is all about how I see my purpose. And I believe today that we need to ask the question, am I living in the expectancy of manifestation or am I asleep? Because here's what's going to happen. I can help wake you up through God's word. How? Because I tend to believe that while we are spending our time doing good things, we're not spending our time doing purposeful things. And we've become overly consumed with good instead of purpose. We've become really occupied with what feels instead of what is. And so now I spend my time in multiple activities and doing multiple things, telling the world I'm busy. I think it's the biggest word that we're using today. I think it's the biggest word that we love to say, I'm so what? Busy. The problem is, is that your busyness isn't producing any fruit. Mm. I'm not doing what God told me to do. He said be fruitful and multiply. I can only multiply that which is healthy. So it puts me in the place to start to think, is what I'm doing enough to get to the purpose that God has called for me to do? The top of the year allows you to reevaluate your life and where you're going and to look into your life to see if it's really purposeful or is it just living. Have you moved your life from a place of existence to a place of living? Are you just here? Anybody know the day routine? I wake up. I take the shower. I get the kids ready. I go to work. I hate it. I come back, I figure out what I'm gonna eat. I go to bed and I do it all over again. And some days I like it, and some days I don't. But here's what I've decided. This is going to be enough because someone told me that my career was my purpose. And no one ever told me there was something more to my life that God put on the inside of me that was supposed to do more than pay my bill. It was supposed to change a life. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's called purposeful living. Yeah. See, when I start to look at the fruit of what is being done in my life and I see lives changing, it means something to the purpose of what God has called for me to do. Now I need through the filter to figure out if what I am doing has purpose because the only reason I'm still living is to fulfill purpose. 
You're not living to make more money. You're not living to go up in more income. You're, you're not living to get a house. You're living to fulfill purpose. And would it be crazy that you've done everything in life good, yet haven't fulfilled your purpose? You were a good parent. You were a good husband. You were a good wife. You were a good uncle. You were a good niece. You just weren't purposeful. And the question is, is what am I going to do? I could go in this year doing another great activity, joining another great club, doing another great thing, occupying another great moment, having another great busy schedule, telling people I'm so busy, I am so occupied, I have so many things to do. Yet when you go home, you've recognized that all of what you've done has amounted to nothing. Well, I guess I'll just go to my points, so sit down and do what I need to do so I can go where I'm supposed to go. When you have no vision for your life, you become engaged in your past because your past is a reflective of a common space that you're used to. And because common spaces produce comfort, comfort is what we seek ourselves to be a part of and as we seek ourselves to be a part of comfort, we never are challenged to move further and grow anywhere outside of where we are. So we never see our future. And yet, while we live our present, we stay in our past. And so the very purpose of what we are to accomplish and the things that we should do, our time is occupied by the things that we used to do because we have no relevant future because we have no vision. And we must have a relevant vision in order to have a relevant present. Other than that, what you work towards is that which has become a habit and the very thought process of that is something that's repeated that no longer requires you or God to make impactful. All it requires is muscle memory. So now you begin to live your days out in muscle memory, not even thinking, can he remember you brush your teeth? Don't even remember when you prayed. Everything is on autopilot. And the problem with autopilot is that it never confers with God to see if anything changed. So the product of your life doesn't yield the results of a fruitful life and multiply, and yet you stay where you are, yet feeling what? Unfulfilled, looking for people to take the place of what vision should have done. That's why being by yourself is so hard, because you have no direction for your own self. So now you seek others to validate what God has already spoken. And in 2020, is trying to perform right now. If you could connect on board with where he's trying to take you and to be who he's tried to call you to be, all God is saying is, I'm waiting on you to get in alignment with what I've already established, the seed that sits inside of you so that it can be watered to do what you've called me to do, God, so I can really be fruitful and multiply. Here's how you make the best of your time. My first point is plan your day according to your purpose, not your comfort. Plan your day according to your purpose, not your comfort. When you wake up and you look at your phone, 
It should reflect your purpose, not your comfort. When you look at your schedule, it should reflect your purpose, not your comfort. That's the reason why Planet Fitness has your money, but yet you don't attend. You didn't schedule for the discomfort, you scheduled for the comfort. And you placed yourself in the place where you're looking to see a summer body with a winter mentality. Tell somebody beside you, it don't work like that. It don't work like that, y'all. I need to be real. You don't have to do another prayer to figure this out. You don't, you don't have to seek God another time. There's already some things that he's placed in front of you that you need to set your time for. And you need to plan accordingly because you are in expectation of what God is doing. Let your calendar reflect what God is about to do. I'm in expectation. Whenever God says I'm moving, I'm moving. Whenever God says I am going, I'm going. Whatever he says I'm doing, I'm right in alignment. Some of us have created permanent solutions for temporary seasons. God is saying, I didn't call you to stay there. What I'm trying to get you to is something that's different, but you've planted yourself permanently in a temporary place. Now when it's time to release or let go, because you had no vision for where you were going, your expectancy of movement is so critical that God can't even get you from where you should be to where, where you are to where you should be. He stopped convincing you that he's a faithful and loving and victorious God. Even though you sing it, you don't believe it. So plan, plan your day according to your purpose, not your comfort. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all. Somebody say all. all. All your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Makes sense now. God, I submit my ways to you. Tell me how this day should go. God, I am purposeful in the way that I'm thinking. I'm purposeful in the way that I'm living. I am purposeful in what I am doing. The reason why is because I understand that you guide my day, but it's my responsibility to plan it. If you're waking up with no plan, I'm telling you, you're wasting time. I'm going to tell you the moment after church and what you do is going to impact your Monday. What you make the decision to do, who you make the decision to eat dinner with, all of this will affect where you are, where you are going, and what you've been called to do. Here's the thing. People are really anxious about people who are very direct in what they want to do because the common mind is that you don't really have to do all of that. But the problem is too many people have left their time up to other people. Here's what I want to let you know. If you don't plan your day, somebody else will. You've seen it done. You've watched it. You've seen somebody take you the other way. I didn't plan on doing this. I didn't put this in my schedule. This is not what I'm, mm -mm, not happening. People say, well, you know what? You, 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 you don't ever want to bend. I don't want to bend because I don't want to bend my destiny. So what I do is align myself with the purpose and the plan that God has already set because I will see 
what's happening come into fruition. How will I see it? I will do something about it. How will I do something about it? I'll plan my day. Guess what? I will tell you what I can do when I get back to you. You won't tell me how long this meeting's going to be. I'll let you know what I'm doing tonight. I'll let you know when I'm ready to come out. I'll let you know why. Because I'm in control of where I'm going. Makes sense. Can I tell you that some of us very lightly have, have relationships and friendships that are wasting our time? Some of you need to reevaluate your friendships, the people in your life, even your family members. I will say it. Because your own family will keep you from fulfilling what God has called for you to do. I mean no harm to you. I love you, but you can't keep me from what God's called me to do. I won't run everywhere you tell me to run, children. I won't go everywhere you tell me to go. I have limits. Why? Because I'm in purpose mode. Write down in your notes, I will set boundaries. I will set boundaries. My time will be valued because my purpose is on the line. I can't waste it. I've got to use the moments for what they need to be used for. I need to get rest when I need to get rest. Some of you up late night looking at ridiculous stuff. Go to bed. That's why you can't get up in the morning to seek the face of God. That's why the things of God seem so error to you. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of the Lord. Okay, great. What time? Wake up 6 o'clock. I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that, Pastor. That's because you're up watching Netflix, which is going to impact none of your purpose. Well, I wanted to see the documentary on Bill Gates. Problem is, Bill Gates ain't helping you. You need to go to sleep. Seek the kingdom of the Lord and his righteousness. And then the Bible says everything else will be added unto you. And you really can't afford it, so take it off your subscription. I'm trying to tell y'all. That's why I don't get invited back much. I'm just trying to say. I'm trying to tell y'all. If you could bog down into your purpose, you could eliminate so many things that are distractions. If you knew what your time was allocated to, you would know when it's time to watch Netflix and when it's time to turn it off. You would know when it's time to do X, Y, Z, when it's time to go here, when it's time to go there. It's like, yeah, I, you want the change, but without the movement, you can't get it. Here's what you must do. Number two, establish your priorities based on your purpose. You must establish your priorities based on your purpose. What you will and will not do. Where you will and will not go. Who and who you won't do it with. Some of you know the person beside you has been tearing away at your time and the fruit of it has been nothing. And yeah, you, you getting older still talking about you kicking it. <laughs> what are we doing? We kicking it. We just, we chill. L listen, when, when, when I'm focused, I don't just have kicking it time. You got to schedule kicking it time. It ain't Friday nights is open. Friday nights is not open. I got stuff to do. I got things to plan. I got places to go. You just can't call me and be like, you want to come over? No, I'm not a college roommate. No. I've got something to do. I'm a grown adult with purpose in my life. Somebody say amen.
All right, all right, all right. Some of y'all need to grow up and become adults, y'all. Need to take a hold of your schedule. Need to stop acting like you're still in college. For those of you who are still in college, enjoy it while you're there. Make sure you take the time to be able to put things in priority, but you need to stop acting like you got all the time left in the world. Your time is running thin. And if you aren't effectively using it, it will waste away. And 2021 will come and you'll say, this is the year again. This is the year of growth. This is the year of jubilee. This is my year. This is... It was supposed to be your year back in 99. We still working on the same vision. I'm trying to tell y'all, here's the thing. You don't understand how close you are. You are so close that the enemy has done everything he can to put distractions in the midst to bring people about to get you off focus, if you only knew how close you were, you would block out everything and say, God, it's you and me this year. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Last point, I'm getting out of here. Disrupted some people. I'm sorry, those of you that are online. I had to click off, I apologize. It's my last one. You must live well, hold on. Let me, let me give you the scripture for that. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2, it says this. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. You feel like everything you're doing is important. But everything that you're doing is not important, nor is it fruitful. And you must allow God to teach and direct your plans tell you and to guide you of the things that are important. And number three, you must live each day out of a renewed expectation. Each day out of a renewed expectation. All right, so let me explain this to you real quick. We were talking about prayer and understanding. The reason some of us have fallen short on the vision that God has given us is because we're not allowing him to renew it daily. The vision is going to seem like it's stagnant when it hasn't been renewed by God. You can't have a one-time encounter with God and then wait on the Lord and never talk to him again because you will be discouraged by the things that the enemy has put around you. For the Bible says in John 10 and 10, for the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it, what? To the full. You can't have life to the full without relationship with Jesus Christ. Honestly, I said relationship, not salvation. Because where we pause is that my salvation replaces my need for relationship. And you must spend time with God outside of just being saved. The building of your relationship, understand a marriage. A marriage, you can get married. But if you do not spend time with your husband or your wife, the marriage goes stale, things go downhill, broken hearts occur, all because time was not focused on relationship. Just because there is a combining of two people does not mean there is an automatic development of growth. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Growth does not happen because you will it. Growth happens because you're purposeful. So your relationship and growth with God must come from being purposeful of connecting his will with yours. It's highly important that we understand that. So you must live each day out of a renewed expectation. 
The Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, I just wanted to read it in the King James because I haven't read that in a long time. And sometimes it just feels good to read that. But it says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think according to the power that worketh what? In what? Us. It's in who? Me. It's how I'm moving, what I'm doing. God has called me to do great things more than I could even imagine or think exceedingly, abundantly, above. Somebody say all. You got to stop settling. Because what you're doing is meager and minor and low. And God is saying, no, I want to do exceedingly, abundantly, exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can even ask or think. So the Bible tells us to ask and we shall receive, seek, and we shall find, knock, and the door shall be open. And God is saying, everything you can think of in that context, I want to do above. My question to you is, do you feel like you're living above? Amen. Do you feel that where you are in your life is in an above moment? Are you, are you hitting exceeding? Is your life exceeding or is it just happening? Because... The world will tell you that settling for average is normal. And I'm interested to tell you today is average is not what God placed you on this earth to be. But exceeding abundantly, above all, that you can even ask or think. Here's the thing, you don't understand that the power is at work within you. It's his power at work inside of you today. And I'm, I'm interested for you to understand that what you're looking for, God has already placed on the inside of you. When Jesus prayed to his disciples, this is, he, he told them this part. He says, when you pray, ask this, give us our daily bread. What he said was, give us daily word. Daily word that will speak and renew what you've already spoken in me. The reason I can stay where I'm supposed to be and stay focused on the plan that God has is because God is renewing me Daily. Somebody say daily. I'm getting renewed vision. I'm excited about what he said 10 years ago. I will see it. I know it's coming to pass. I know it will happen. I will walk in it. And the word of God lets me know that today. And in this place, I'm here today to let you know that God wants to fulfill everything he's called you to do. So wake up. It's your time. Tell your neighbor, it's your time. It's your time. It's not your time to say it's your time again. Because you've done it in church 50 times. No, it's your time to be everything that God has called you to be. Can you stand to your feet? Oh, man. I'm excited. I'm excited for what you will see as you value the time of what God has called for you to do. Moments like these, I love being able to teach our church because I, I, I find teaching and in, in, in the complexities of what people don't understand is that you can get motivated, but motivated without instruction doesn't get you to your goal. So I need you to be more than motivated. I need you to take a hold of what God's word says for your life. The Bible says you're, you're more than a conqueror. The Bible says that you have purpose and a plan. The Bible says before the foundation of the world, 
he had set aside a plan for you today. And so today, if you're in this house and you know that it's time for God to refocus your mind and your thoughts, just in this moment, it's an opportunity for you to connect right now with God. Lord, I, I will use the time that I have more wisely. And wisdom means that you apply the knowledge that you already know. I will use what I know to be who you've called me to be. In this place today, I want to pray. Then I'm going to ask for those that are ready to make this decision to follow Jesus. And then we're just going to celebrate all that God is doing. And we're telling people, I will see it. I will see the manifestation of the promise of God. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you so much for the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, because you are speaking to us. Now is the time for us to wake up, to know that there is a plan, a most generous and audacious, amazing, more than we could imagine or even think plan that you have set over our lives. So, Father, I pray today that we not go back to the mundane, but that we would experience life abundantly. Father, I pray today over every individual who calls in their mind if this word is for them, and I pray that you speak life into their understanding. We love you, we honor, and we thank you. In Jesus' name. If you're in this place today and you're ready to make the decision to follow Jesus, you're saying, God, I want you to have my heart. I want you to have my life. Everything that I desire is in you. If that is you today, and we're in this moment. I just want the opportunity to be able to pray for you. So if that's you, as we do at our church, on the count of three, I just want to see your hand if you're ready to make a fresh start or see God do new things. You ready? One, two, three. Let me see those hands. Yeah, I see them all over the place. Amen. 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 God bless you. You can put your hand down. Listen, I want to pray a prayer with you. And I say this at our church. It's not the prayer that saves you but it is the posture of your heart to God. Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I thank you for a new start in the plans that you have for my life. Forgive me of anything that is not like you and allow me to walk the path that you set before. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I pray that you were blessed by this message. We'd love to connect with you beyond this moment. So I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you'll get updates on when a new sermon is posted, as well as when we go live during our worship experiences uh, on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Uh, also, you can connect with us on social media. You can go to Facebook or Instagram and look for Miracle City Church. And on Twitter, you can find us at Miracle City Life. We really do believe that God's doing something special in this congregation and in this family. And we're so blessed that you've chosen um, to connect with us. And if you've been blessed and you want to be a blessing, we invite you to go to our website. You can find all the information for giving there by going to miraclecitychurch.org slash give. And we know the Lord will bless you for your generosity. Thanks so much for being part of what God is doing here. And we pray many blessings on your life.